بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my beloved brothers and sisters I trust that all you guys are in the best of health and iman inshallah ta'ala so today inshallah I've got a bit more of a very educational video for you guys inshallah and before I get into it I just want to run by a quick hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I came across بإذن الله تعالى the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us that it was ordered that one of the slaves of Allah, from amongst his slaves, one of his slaves, to be given 100 lashes. And this person, he continued to plead and ask Allah to forgive him and decrease it until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreased it to one lash. And he was given that one lash so much so that his whole grave turned into fire. After he came back into consciousness and he woke up. He asked those that gave him the whip, the lash. He said, Ala ma jaladtumuni. He said, for what did you lash me? For what did you hit me? What was the reason for this? Qalu, they said, and they gave two reasons. They said, Inna wahidatan bi tuhur. They said, you prayed one salah without purification. And the second reason was, مَرَرْتَ عَلَى مَذْلُومٍ وَلَمْ تَنْصُرْهُ That you went by somebody who was being oppressed and you didn't help them. The thing that I want to focus on in this hadith is the reason, one of the reasons why this man was given the lash. So much so that his whole grave was filled with fire. إِنَّ قَصَلَيْتَ وَاحِدَةً بِغَيْرِ طُهُورِ He prayed one salah without purification. Now brothers and sisters, this is a massive deal and it's a huge, huge problem in the Ummah today that you would actually find amongst our elders and youngsters that they do not really know what is purification and how does one purify themselves before it comes time for the Salah. And really and truly, if you ask many people to give you an account of how the Prophet actually did his wudu, I guarantee you that many of them would say many things which are innovated and they are incorrect and they were added later on and it's not according to the sunnah of the Prophet. And remember the other hadith of the Prophet that he said that Allah would not accept the salah of any one of you who is impure and the impurity here is referring to the minor impurities, right? That Allah will not accept your salah until you come with wudu, until you come with Wudu. So if a person does not know how to do wudu and he hasn't gone about searching how to do wudu when he can and he keeps on praying these salawat without the wudu correctly then is his salah being accepted? I mean there's a very big question mark on this issue. So inshallah what I really wanted to do was I decided to do a bit of research with my teacher and figure out what was the sunnah of doing wudu according to the Prophet So I've compiled 10 points for you guys inshallah 10 steps on how to do your wudu so next time when you pray your salah it will be with purification and that you know that everything is going to come from authentic ahadith and ayahs from the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's get into them right now okay so step number one that you need is that you need to know is that the water that you're using has to be pure so you can't go out there and use for example milkshake you can't use Coke or Pepsi, you have to use pure water in order to do wudu and it has to be done on specific parts of your body. It's not that you just dash water on your face and that's it. You have to use specific parts. And if you go to Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, O you who believe, when you stand up for prayer, wash your faces and wash your arms to your elbows and wash, and I'm sorry, wipe over your head, your head, wipe over your head and wash your feet to your ankles. So these are specific parts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that you have to do wudu on. And now when we go to the ahadith of the Prophet, we're going to add more parts that we should do in order to do it exactly how the Prophet wasalam, did it. And that's step number one. Step number two. Now remember, with every action in our religion, it's important that we always come with an intention. Now this doesn't mean that when we go to the bathroom to do our wudu that we utter our intentions out loud. No, rather this is not from our religion. We don't have to go out there and say, Oh Allah, I'm beginning my wudu for Salat al-Dhuhr. No, we don't do that. Rather, let's implement the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, لا وضوء لمن لم يذكر اسم الله عليه That there is no wudu for 
for the one that does not mention the name of Allah upon it. So once you've brought, you know, come to your intentions in your heart that you're going to do your wudu, mention the name of Allah and say Bismillah and begin your wudu. And what is the first step in your wudu? That you begin with washing your hands. Ghasalahuma thalatha marwad. You wash them. You wash your right and your left hand three times as the Prophet mentioned in the hadith. After washing your right and your left hand three times together, what do you do next? Then you do You grab a some water in your hands, a scoop of water in your hands and you put some in your mouth for gargling and straight away you sniff into your nose the rest and you gargle your mouth and then and then you blow out with your left hand now many of us when we usually do wudu how do we do it we get water and we gargle three times separately and then we put water in our nose three times separately and then blow it out with our left hands well if we want to do according to the sunnah of the prophet then when the prophet said to do um to do it in three scoops all of that process of putting water in your mouth and your nose and then blowing it out do it in three scoops so the prophet didn't say do your mouth in three scoops and then do your nose in three scoops no from what we learn from the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the whole process was done in three scoops so if you want to do it closer to the Prophet ﷺ, then do it according to this. It is difficult at the beginning, but ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you, and inshallah Allah will make it easy for you. Step number three, what do we do next? Then, ثُمَّ غَسَلَ وَجَهَهُ ثَلَاثَ The Prophet taught us to wash our faces three times. Wash our th- faces. So we're not wiping the water, because the Prophet didn't use masr. Use the word ghasl. So the word ghasl is what we're going to do. We are going to wash our faces. And what is part of our faces? As for the men, we know that we have beards. Okay, we have a lihya. So what, how do we do wudu when we have a lihya? Because obviously the water is not getting to our face. So sometimes that can be a problem. Well, we take it from another hadith mentioned in Tirmidhi of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, where it was said, كَانَ يُخَلِّلُ لِحْيَتَهِ that he would yukhallil. Yukhallil means to go through your beard with your fingers like this. Okay? So this is what the Prophet would do when he would wash his face and his beard. So, wash your face three times. So we're talking from our ear, from the start of our ears to the end of our ears. And from the start of our hairlines to the bottom where our, uh, where our chins are. Okay? All of this cons- is consisting of our face. And we have to wash all of it. And as for the men, we have to include the lahya as well. So if you have a big beard like mine, it's quite thick, then you khalil. Okay, do what the Prophet did. Go through with your fingers with your beard. Step number four, the hadith mentions, وَيَدَيْهِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ We are taught that when the Prophet did wudu, he would do from yadayhi. The word yaday means your hands. Okay, your hands. So yadayhi إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ Usually, what the people do when it comes to doing the arms, they go from the wrist to the elbows and just before the elbows. Okay, they do it just before the elbows. But the hadith mentions yaday. So the Prophet will go from his hands, ilal mirfaqaini. And the strongest opinion is, is that you don't just go just before the elbow, rather, you include the elbows and you go slightly just past it. So yadayhi ilal mirfaqaini. Just go slightly past your elbows, inshallah. Step number five, thumma masaha bi ra'si. Masaha is different between ghasala. Ghasala means to wash, like I mentioned before, and masaha means to wipe. So in the hadith when it says masaha, for the head, right, we don't have to get lots of water to start washing our hair like crazy. Rather, get your hands wet with water, wipe backwards to the back of your hair, and then come back up to the front of your hair. And this is the same for the men and for the women. A lot of sisters, they might ask that, no, it has to be different because we have longer hair and etc. and etc. But we need to know that the only way it becomes different for you and different for the man is if the Prophet specified it. If the Prophet ﷺ didn't specify a difference between the hair of the man and the woman, then we don't say there is a difference. We say the woman has to do the exact same thing. And remember, even our Prophet ﷺ used to have long hair. So he still used to do the same thing. Go back when we do the mas'ah and then come back up again. So make sure that we do that properly. Number six, it's important to know that 
how, how, how do we go about the ears? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Udhunani Mina Ra'si That the two ears, they are from the head, they are part of the head So, when the hadith mentions about washing your head Then make sure we wash our ears as part of it Because the Prophet already told us that the ears are part of the head So, you can just water uh, a wash around the ear and inside very quickly uh, And that is sufficient bi ta'ala Number seven ثُمَّ غَسَلَ رِجْلَيْهِ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ Now we're going to be washing our feet to our ankles. Now just as we did for the arms, we did يَدَيْهِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ We did our hands, including our elbows. The same thing we're going to do with the feet. We're going to do feet, our رِجْلَيْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ And we're going to include our ankles in this as well. And again, we're going to do it three times. Starting from our right and then our left. The same thing that we did for our arms. We went from the right arm to the elbow, to the left arm, uh, into the elbow. So remember, we have to follow as suit from right, then to the left, inshallah ta'ala. Number eight, and this is the last part of the actual wudu in terms of washing your body parts. But we know also from the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that when it came to his feet, his toes, to clean in between the toes, he would use his pinky, right? So he would use his small finger and he would rub in between each one in order to clean them. And then again, it would be from the right foot and then he'd go on to the left foot. So add that into your wudu as well if you want to get as close as possible to the wudu of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The ninth point is, now that you finish your wudu, it's always good to remember that when you do your wudu, try to be as minimum in your usage of water. Okay, because nowadays we have running tabs and we use a lot of water and subhanAllah we're really wasting a lot of water and this is not how the Prophet would do rather the Prophet would have small amounts of water and, how, and that small amount that he had would be sufficient enough for him to do his wudu and sometimes even his ghusl so sometimes it might be better for you to just get like a small container put water inside it and just use that water for your wudu so now you've minimized the amount of water that you're using and you're not wasting as much and now the last point to mention is that whenever the Prophet would finish his wudu, uh, he would say the following: "Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh." And the Prophet mentioned that anybody who does his wudu correctly, and then he mentions this right after this du'a, right after his wudu, Allah will open for him all of the gates of Jannah, all eight of them, and he will enter through whichever one that he likes. My dear brothers and sisters. Wouldn't you love that for yourselves? So make sure that you read this du'a after you finish your wudu. And then secondly, it was narrated that when the Prophet would finish his wudu, thumma, thumma then he would go and pray two raka'ah. So if you have time, then inshallah, after you do your wudu and you make your du'a, go and quickly pray two raka'ah ta'ala in order to do your wudu exactly how the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to do it. So there you have it, 10 points on how to do your wudu according to the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. My dear brothers and sisters, if you really benefited from the video and you don't want anybody else to be in the position that you were at once, then please send this video to all of your brothers and sisters and your friends and families, inshallah, so they may benefit too. Jazakumullahu khairan, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.